Hi friends, Sharon from Mad Paper Crush here. Today I wanted to try my hand at some altered puzzle pieces. And I've never done this before, but I will say I have tried it many times before and I have struggled <laughs> through the process. I wanted to put a book page on my puzzle piece and that was the hardest part, I think, was trying to figure out the best way to get the book page onto the puzzle piece in a way that you could still see the curves and designs of the piece. So I hope that you'll join me today. I did figure out a way to do it and I ended up creating these two puzzle pieces that I'm going to be used in a naturalist um, Halloween journal that I'm working on. And these two, this one, um, I kind of did a steampunk theme on it with some gears and some keys. And this one is just um, a flower with open that probably could go in a steampunk journal as well. Um, so. I hope that you'll join me as we make these altered puzzle pieces. Okay, here's what I'm starting with. Um, I have a puzzle that I got at the dollar store and this one is a 48 piece puzzle. Um, so it has nice big pieces of puzzle and I picked out a couple that connect and you certainly don't have to do that, but I just thought, well, let me put them together and then if I, whatever I end up with, if I wanna put them back together, that might be kind of neat. So, um, and the pieces aren't real thick either. So you can kind of see, uh, because I think I'm gonna be punching some holes or putting some eyelets in or something like that. So um, I think this puzzle is a, a good size for doing this. Um, cause you don't want them too small, obviously, so that you can handle them. So I've just picked out six pieces to get started. And I have my craft glue, um, beacon craft glue. I also have some Mod Podge here. This is the satin finish. Mod. I have my craft knife that I just replaced the blade on. So I'm gonna have to remember not that I probably don't need to push as hard as I have been since I, it's been a while since I changed the blade. And then um, a paintbrush to use with the Mod Podge. And I have just this little nail file that I'm gonna be using to scuff up um, the pieces so that everything sticks to them. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take my um, coarse file here and just um, scuff them the tops up a little bit. So these are, you know, whatever is put on top of them is kind of shiny. And I just want to be sure that whatever I do to them isn't going to come off. I mean, I think the three in one glue will probably hold them just fine. But I am just going to go ahead and add a little bit of scuff to them to make sure that everything that I stick down is gonna actually stay stuck down to them. Um, the backs don't need to be done because they're just plain like chipboard. So um, they're already nice and porous and I think they'll be fine with whatever I do if I even do anything on the back. Um, this is just a play it by ear kind of thing, folks. So, <laughs> um, Okay, so you can see I've got them scratched up. And because I'm putting book page on, I don't think I need to cover the base um, for, you know, for it showing through. Let me just move my get these dust out of there. And then I am just gonna take a little um, something, maybe a piece of scrap fabric here, and just make sure I wipe the tops off too so they're not so dusty. <clears throat> okay. And I decided to use, um, I have this beautiful Russian book. Um, I think it's a chemistry book. There seems to be a lot of equations and things in it, um, but it doesn't look like math to me. <laughs> it looks like it was like it's chemistry or something. So it's, it's beautiful. The writing is so beautiful on it. So I'm going to use this as my page and um, the page that I want on the outside of my puzzle pieces, I'm putting down on the mat. So then all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little glue on these and I'm going to glue them down um, to the page. Now I had told you I did find um, ones that fit together and I can maybe put them near each other, but I don't think I want to glue them down attached because I want to be able to get them back up. And <clears throat> excuse me, I'm probably going to be doing 
so much painting and um, collaging on top of them that you're probably not going to be able to see them anyway. Um, the only thing I might want to do is work on um, just taking a quick look to see what side up do I want. So for example, if I'm doing this piece, um, you know, I'm not sure exactly where this edge goes, but what is right side up to me? So for this one, like maybe I want this to be right side up because maybe I'll put a hole here to add, you know, um, something to hang, or even I could do it this way so that this is at the bottom for some dangles or something like that. So I'm going to decide each piece before I put it down, which side I'm going to consider up. And I think I'm going to try to um, vary it a little bit so that I can try some different things as I'm collaging and decorating them. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to kind of, <clears throat> on this one, maybe I'll put the flat side down. And this one, I don't have a, well, this one actually might be a good point down piece. And then maybe, you know, I think I'm going to do that one down as well. Okay, so I've decided which way's up on all my pieces. And <clears throat> once again, you don't have to do that. Um, you know, I just think that I want my words to be right side up um, on my piece, but that's, you certainly don't have to do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue them down. So I'm just gonna pick up each piece and put some of my Beacon 3-in-1 craft glue on it. And then stick them right back down. Okay, and we'll give those a second to dry. Full disclosure, you guys, the methods I was trying before, which I left um, some of the video in there, didn't work the way I wanted it to. So when I used the Mod Podge, um, because I was holding the puzzle pieces and trying to push the edges down and around the puzzle piece, I started um, pulling away some of my book page. So, so that didn't work. Then I tried some uh, matte medium and that just would not wrap around, it wasn't sticky enough to wrap the book page around um, the way it is. So I sort of had to um, abandon <laughs> the way I was doing this. So um, we're gonna try something else and see how it goes. So I glued down a couple more pieces and instead of um, cutting them out, with a border, I'm actually going to do my best to cut them right at the edge. Now, I think that you could probably, you know, trace each of the pieces and then cut out the, you know, fussy cut the the puzzle piece out and then glue the book page onto the puzzle piece. Um, but I feel like the fussy cutting is gonna take me longer than to just use my craft knife to go around. And then when I'm done, I am going to use my file again to just file down the edges and make sure that um, all of the, you know, anything that got, you know, not quite cut, ugh, not cut quite exactly to the edge, you know, will be, you know, filed off. So I'm going to go ahead and cut them out just like that. You can see here this one. Let me just cut this out. So as I started to cut this corner, you can see my book page is already starting to, you know, fray a little bit because the um, craft knife doesn't cut it that great, but that's okay. I want these to be a little bit distressed anyway. So I'm gonna continue to just go ahead and go through and try and cut right to the edge of all the pieces um, and get you know in all the corners and things like that to cut it out. So it's gonna be a little bit messy on the front, but we'll take care of that when we're done.
Okay. Now, um, I've cut them all out um, just, you know, as best as I could. And I can already see it's um, <laughs> given me a nice, better, much better result than what I had when I was trying to Mod Podge them around. <laughs> so, um, well, all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sand the edges of the puzzle piece, making sure that any places where the paper is um, frayed or, you know, coming off a little bit, is um, sanded off. So I'm gonna use different sides of this probably depending on you know how much work I have to do and I might need something else to get into that little piece. Um, so that's all I'm gonna do right now is just get this all sanded down so that we can start decorating them. Okay, so as I was finishing up, I realized that I kind of wanted to get into these corners a little bit. So I have um, some smaller files that I use for some jewelry making. And so I'm just going to go in and make sure to figure out which one's going to work best here. Maybe even this one to just go through and knock off some of the edges in these little corners. All right, I cleaned up my mat and I'm loving the way these are looking. So now of course we need to, we need to distress them a bit. So I have the uh, Walnut Stain Distress Oxide here and I'm just gonna add a little bit around the edges and um, I may even go over, you know, the middle a little bit just to add that vintage feel to it. this one maybe I'll just kind of do a little bit more This one I'll do a little bit more distressing. Okay, so now we have our bases ready to go for some decoration. So the first thing I'm going to do, um, I, I'm just I'm going to do one at a time because I can't think in force. I don't know about you guys, but I cannot think in force. So um, I'm going to pick one that I want to work on, and I think I'm going to do this one. And I wanted to make this one a little steampunkish. So I have some bits and pieces that I'm going to be using for that. So I have some keys and some gears and um, some words that I think I'm gonna use, either explore or truth. I'm not sure which one I'm going to use here, um, but we'll decide, we'll decide as we go here. Um, I don't wanna put them here so I lose them. Um, and then I was thinking that I would hang this key from the bottom. I think that would look really neat there. So I'm taking this punch, which is a 1.8 millimeter punch, and I'm just gonna punch it 
right in the middle of this bottom little dangly puzzle piece there so that I have a nice little hole that I can put like this. Um, I have this jump ring, this big jump ring that I think will go through and put the key on. So I just wanted to have that there so I knew it was there. But now we can go ahead and start decorating um, the rest. And while I have these little pieces, I do think I want a touch of fabric or trim or something on here. So let me go grab something and see what we can do. I have some coffee dyed trim here. And then I also just cut some um, circles out of a piece of scrap paper that I had and um, they weren't complete circles because I thought these might look good um, on the edges of my of my puzzle piece here just to add you know a pop of color or something like that so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I distress these the edges of these a little bit and then um, I'm also going to after I do this, I want to distress my little explore word here. So um, what I want to do is I'm going to use this little brush pen. I think it's um, it's a pit artist pen, but it's a nice brown. And I want to be sure the edges of my word really pop out when I put them on. So I'm just running the edge of the brush along the side of this word a little bit to hopefully give me a little bit of... Um, contrast when I put it down. So, and I did decide to use the word explore here instead of truth. So um, now I'm just going to put a little, let me do it over here, a little distress stain on that, a little distressing on the word for myself there. So that can go on like that. And now I'm gonna um, start gluing down pieces. So I'm just going to, I think I'm gonna use my glitter glue for my little circles here. And I already like the way the um, color kind of makes this pop a little bit. that and then um, before I do anything else I just kind of want to decide where everything else should go so I do want to use some of this trim and I like the way it kind of um, you know I could put it over the edges a little bit to give it a little interest so I think maybe what I'll do is I'll just cut this down about right here and I kind of like that little angled look on the, the one side that was probably left over from something else that I cut it out of. But I kind of like how it maybe gives a, the impression of a little, you know, crown or something there. So I'm going to zoom in here because I realize I'm probably pretty far away. Okay, so now I have... Um, I think I'm, I like that here, and I think that'll be sort of a nice frame for our word, so I can put that on top there. I like that. And then, um, so let me just move this out of the way for a second, but I think I want to put these gears, I don't know, I don't think this has a front or a back. I think I'm going to put them up in this corner, um, but I want the one gear to really kind of um, come off the puzzle piece to add some interest to that edge there. And let's see if this will be enough. Actually, I think this might be just perfect. Just like that. And then we can add our key to the bottom. So let me go ahead and glue this stuff on and I'll go over the different glues that I'm going to use because I am going to, um, I think I'm just gonna use my glitter glue for this, for the trim here. And I'm just going to put a light um, smattering of glue there because this will come through. 
And then I'm going to put that where I want it. And then we'll glue down the word as well. And I think I just wanted that right at the bottom there. Now for the gears, I'm going to use my E6000 glue. Um, these are pretty heavy pieces and I want to be real sure that they don't, you know, fall off on me. So um, I'm just going to kind of decide where I want that because I'm going to put this one down first so I know sort of where to put my glue um, because this will get messy real fast. I'm sure you're not surprised. So I'm just going to bring out um, a scrap piece of paper to be able to wipe off um, the glue if it starts coming out because these tubes are terrible <laughs> the way that they um, you know if you squeeze on them just a little bit there's glue getting everywhere so I'm just going to try to put a little bit down I'm sort of guessing where I want the glue to go and I'm gonna push that down right in there and I think that was pretty good I got a little bit over the puzzle piece but that's all right this will dry nice and secure there and then this one um, I do want to kind of put on the edge of that one so I'm going to glue it just all over the back and make sure that we get good coverage on this one to go down whoa and I'm definitely going to end up with glue all over my hands for sure that's okay and this is it so far and I'm going to I think I'm just gonna let that dry well you know what I think I can go ahead and put this on because this is not too um, it's not gonna not gonna hurt it too much if I do this so all I'm gonna do is I'm taking this kind of this brass jump ring and I'm putting it through a hole and actually I want to, I'm gonna put it through so that it, I'll close it in the back of the puzzle piece. And then I'm just gonna slip this um, key on and very carefully because I, we are still wet. I'm just gonna take two pliers here and carefully just cinch those back together and make sure that they're aligned. Whoops, pretty good. And I love it. I love it, you guys. It turned out great. And the other one that I had done, see if I can find it, I did this one as well, and I had punched a hole just like I'd punched on that one. I added a key with the E6000 on this one, and I put a little paper flower with a brad there with some lace behind, and then I just added a little dangle. So I punched a hole right in the bottom corner of this one and made a little dangle for that one. Okay. Um, I wanted to go ahead and do two more and I figured I'd turn on the camera while I was doing it to just show you what I was doing. So I'm taking one of these makeup brushes and I'm using for this the Black Soot Distress Ink um, and I'm going over the um, walnut stain that we had already done. So this one I kind of want to be more black and actually this one too, um, then I do want it to be brown. So I'm just going over it. Um, layers are always a good thing, I think. <laughs> the more layers, the better it looks, the more vintage sometimes it looks. So this one's, um, these two, I want more of a 
darker look than a brown look but you can still see this one still has some of the brown in there which is I think totally fine so then the next thing I want to do is I have a couple of stamps that I'm going to use for these so instead of um, and I don't know if I'm going to use words or not on these but um, I'm definitely going to use stamps so I have this um, I think it's a raven um, and I think that's would look really cool on one of these and then also on the other one I have a little skull that I think looks fun too so um, I'm gonna use the raven on one and I think I'm gonna use I'm just gonna test you know how the size here so I think I'm gonna use the raven on this one because I think that'll fit nice there and then I will use the skull on this one somehow. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that. But I still wanna add some, you know, some other elements. So I have some beads here um, that I might use and um, I have some um, lace that, it's just white lace, but I used my Distress Ink to just kind of darken it up a little. Um, I think that'll add some, I kind of like the way the white still shows through a little bit when you do this, but it also adds, you know, that sort of dark to it. So I'm gonna let that dry, and then we'll probably use some of that too on one or both of these. And let me decide, um, because I'm using the black soot, I may wanna use a different color for the actual, um, the stamp itself. And I had a thought. I have this rustic indigo um, embossing powder from Seth Apter. So I think I'm gonna use that. I think that would look really cool um, with these on, on here. So I'm gonna use my Versamark pad and stamp on my Raven. Let me kind of move this stuff out of the way so I can figure out what I'm doing here. So I'm just gonna make sure my Raven is nice and covered with my Versamark. And then, this is right side up. And I think I like it better this way. So we're gonna go ahead and do it this way. And put it right where I want it. Give it a nice stamp. And you won't be able to see it. But I will go ahead and put some of this rustic indigo all over there. And that's coming off nicely. I'm just going to tap whoa, the back of this. See if I can try that again. I hope it didn't mess it up. Make sure all of my other things are off. And we'll go ahead and pour this back in here. And close that up. And now I'm going to use my heat tool. Um, and I will turn off the sound because I know this is probably gonna be really loud. So I'm gonna try and hold it with some pliers here and then heat this up and see if we can get that going. And I am totally loving it. So it might take a minute to dry, but you can see my little crow on there. Isn't that awesome? I love that. Okay, so let's let that dry. And I think I'm gonna do the same thing with the skull here. Um, I'm trying to decide how I wanna do this. I may do, for this one, since the skull is kind of small for this piece, I may try to stamp this on something else before it goes on. And actually, I think I want, I have so many scraps of paper over here, which I've been telling you guys to keep and do stuff with. <laughs> 
Let me see, where did my stamp go for my raven? Hello. Do you guys lose stuff that you put down right in front of you? Okay, here it is. Okay. So let me see about, I think I might try Let's just do a black stamp with this one. And actually, maybe I'll even try my soot, my black soot for this, and see how that turns out. And that turned out pretty good, I think. And that definitely will have a pop if I just put that on there. So I have to decide if that's what I wanna do, because I may want to, um, stamp right on there but I feel like it needs some additional color or something and now I could do it this way again but that means I might have to do it like right in the middle which might be okay but I think I want to put something else down first I could use some of this lace. Let me see how that's gonna work. Actually, that might be kind of cool with the skull on top of the lace. Maybe if I just kind of tear that out. Let's do that. Let's see if I can get that to work the way I want it to. Because I will tell you guys, I feel like I've done this video 400 times. <laughs> And I can never seem to get it the way, work the way I want it to work. And as you can see, I've already put my finger all over that <laughs> so that it's kind of mushed. So let's try again. And maybe what I'll do is I'll work on the Raven while this is drying. Does that make more sense? Okay, so we'll put that aside to dry stuff all over my fingers. Okay, let's move our stamps out of the way so I can lose them later. <laughs> okay, now we can decide what we're going to do with this. So um, I was thinking about maybe using some of these garment hooks um, with some beads or something dangling down. I kind of like that idea for this one. Um, but I could also use some, um, I think I still have, maybe not, I'm not sure I have, no, I don't have black keys. I'm thinking a black key might be nice, but I could do maybe a silver key, Let's see if I can find something that maybe has the right feel for this piece. Ooh, I'm having an idea. I have some bugs. I kind of like that idea. Oh, that's like a bee. I also have a ladybug. Hmm. It's also a bee. But let's see. I think I like the B. And so we're gonna do the same thing with this one that we did with the other one. We'll punch a hole in the bottom here. And then I can put my safety pin through. And I think this is gonna have to go this way, maybe. I like that. But I think it needs some more, it needs something else. So maybe what I'll do is I'll try to make a little, I have some black wire here. So maybe what I'll try to do is make a little dangle 
with um, some of these beads. Let's do this. Maybe I will add some beads. to our bumblebee here. Maybe that'll be enough. Actually, I do like that. Oh, that one I can't get over. The hole's not big enough for that one to go over. I do like that bead on there. So then maybe what I'll do is I will leave it for now. <laughs> okay, I think I found something. I have these little paper flowers and I like the way that looks with the raven. And I have these silver brads. So I think a silver brad on the inside of that would make it look nice here. And I think I'm going to, looks like it might already have a hole in here. I'm just gonna poke something extra make sure that this goes in there okay. All right, I like that you guys. I think it's coming together. Let me put these away where I end up scattering them all over the place, which if you saw the rest of my room, you would realize everything is pretty much scattered all over the place anyway. Okay, so for this one, um, I really like the way that looks. So I think I'm just going to use some E6000 for this one to glue that flower down to make sure it stays in place. And I'm just gonna put it mostly on the brad and then just a little bit on the around on the flower as well to make sure it's, it stays down well. And then I am gonna just turn this over and make sure I have it on the puzzle piece itself because <laughs> that would be bad. Okay, oops. I like how that one turned out as well. All right, let's see if we can finish this one more up. And this time I'm going to try to tear around this skull without getting my fingers all over it and wrecking it. <laughs> but hopefully it's more dry than it was the last time. Yeah, that's working better. This one, I think I'll just maybe try to scuff up a little with my scissors this side, since I don't really wanna tear that side too much. I think I'm gonna tear just a little bit more here. little guys out of the way. Okay. Now for the rest of this, I do think I want this guy on top, but I like, 
um, I like to use some fabric in here. So let me grab my, let me just cut a little off first and then I'll decide, cause I think I want to taper the corners like we did on the other one. Cause I kind of liked the sort of the way that kind of looked. Let's see. Maybe I'll put this up higher. Let's see, I'm just gonna taper these a little bit. And see how they look. And I definitely need to distress that guy. But now for this one, I'm gonna do two holes. And I have an idea of what I'm going to do, but as you've noticed, this day <laughs> doesn't seem to be always going my way. So I was gonna do that there. And these don't have any words. I could maybe put a word up there, but actually I kind of like just how that kind of looks. And then I was going to use the beads again and some wire to just make a little dangle that goes across here. So let's see if we can do that much. So I'm going to, I think I'm just going to use, let's see, I'm going to see if I have some smaller beads to go with this. Okay, look what I found. I found sort of these Aurora Borealis beads, but they're like seed beads. So I think putting them with this, I think will be kind of, kind of neat. So I'm just going to do... I'm gonna thread one and then thread one of these beads and just see how it does, or how I like it if I just alternate them. Okay, so let's see. I think that might be long enough. Maybe two more black beads. Okay, and before everything rolls away, let me put these away. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by attaching this end. So, I'm just going to put this through. And then create just a little twist here at the top. To hold it in place. And I'm going around multiple times. Um, I really feel like that holds it better. And then I'm just going to cut off the end there to try and get it finished off close to the end. And then I'll just tuck in that little pointy end. Okay, so now I have a nice little twist there and I have my beads. And then I'm just going to cut off 
another couple inches to do my other side. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna thread it through. Oops, I'm missing a bead. Did it fall off somewhere? I'm missing one of the teeny tiny beads that should be in the end unless I just never put it on, which certainly is a possibility. There we go. Okay, let's try again. So we wanna keep these um, kind of stacked up here as much as we can so I know how far to put it through. And then I wanna give myself a little bit of room at the bottom to be able to do my twist. So I think that's probably pretty good. And then I'm just going to take my wire and do the same thing, just start wrapping it around a bunch of times here until we make it nice and secure. And then I'll cut it off. And then we will tuck that little end in. Hopefully. Okay. And then this is going to go here. And this we need some distress ink on. Let's see if I can do it with this makeup brush. I like it, but once again, I think it needs a little something. So I think what I'm going to do is I think it might be fun to do, because I think this one could use a little, like I think this rustic indigo looks great with that. So I think what I might do is just find a little stamp that I could put some put something on on the back here with some of that purple so let me go see if i can find something for that okay um seth after has these awesome um texture stamps i think those are um this would look great on here so i'm using the one that i think looks like screw heads there and i'm just i'm not even going to put it on a on a board there i'm just going to use my versamark uh, because I just think it needs it at the top. So I'm just going to stamp this on. And hopefully I got where I wanted to get. And let me grab my board again. Didn't expect to be doing this again, but. And let's go ahead and pour our rusty indigo on there. Yes. So we'll give this a bang. Hopefully I won't drop it. <laughs> but I think that's going to do just what I wanted to kind of get the, get some more texture and color in there. Go ahead and heat this baby. Move this out of the way so that I don't lose it, because I will.
Okay. Now let's take a look at how this will look. I should probably let that dry for just a second. Let me put some of this stuff away. I always have 400 things out at one time. Okay, pretty dry. And my mat is bubbling. It always does that when I heat, when I use my heat tool on it. So I apologize if it's bubbling up a little. I like the way that's looking. I think maybe we could use one more thing. I could use like a little piece of metal or something here. Let's see. Okay, I found this little um, dangle that I have that looks like it could be a little spider. So I think that would fit here perfectly. So I'm just going to, um, I, I, I don't want the whole thing. I just want the spider part. So I'm gonna see if I can cut off this little top part and boy, that was easy. And I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna grab my file again and just make sure the ends of this are filed down a bit. Perfect. Okay. I think that's looking good. So I'm going to start putting everything down and I'm going to use my glitter glue for the lace and the skull. So I'm just putting my little bit here. Right about where I want it. And then I will add some to my skull. Put him down. And then for the little spider there, I think I'm going to use my E6000 glue to make sure that stays down. and then we will let them dry. And there we have it. So here you go, guys. A couple for my natural Halloween journal that I'm working on. And then I have my Explore one, my little steampunk one. And there's my bead I think I lost. And then I have this one that says open. And I just love the way they turned out. Let me see if you could actually see them all. I'll zoom out a little bit and bring them down. And there we go. Thanks so much for sticking with me, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. And I hope you've subscribed and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Have a great weekend.